there's always somewhere near you that's not far away that takes bloody ages to get to and Bath where I am right now is one of those places it's only about 34 35 kilometers from my house but it seems to take so long to get here like an hour or so because uh, you either have to go cross country or around the motorway anyway uh, I'm at Bath University today, Sports Village is just over there. I'm um, here to see Dr. Jonathan Robinson today to do the testing that I spoke about a couple of weeks ago. The aim of today's testing, I'm going to do a bike test and a run test, um, is to primarily locate my fat max uh, point, which is the, uh, the heart rate and power and the heart rate and pace, uh, according to bike and run. Um, where I'm burning the optimum amount of fat percentage per calorie. So the most calories I can burn and uh, the most amount of fat within those calories so that I can focus my training over the next couple of months to get rid of as much this weight as possible, focusing on those zones. I will also get some other information uh, out of this session. Uh, I'll get really accurate uh, low zones, so zones one, two, probably three, four and five probably won't be quite so accurate because we won't be doing a maximal test today. It's going to be sub-maximal, which is why I'm not so worried about doing it. It won't hurt so much. Um, we'll probably get some lactate info. I think they're taking blood every four minute block um, to get some lactate info. So probably get LT1, LT2 uh, out of this testing as well. And probably some other little bits of data here and there that will be interesting. However, primary uh, focus of today is to get this uh, fat max point from the RER respiratory exchange ratio that you get from, uh, from the gas exchange machine that we're gonna have on the front of my face uh, during these tests. So that's what we're here to do. I bought my bike and my turbo today. Not that their amazing SRM isn't accurate, but I need the numbers uh, for training myself. So um, yesterday I spent a little bit of time um, essentially running through the protocol that we're going to do today on the bike which is a four minute block of 25 watt increments so starting at 75 watts and going up to whatever Jonathan uh, wants me to get to before I stop uh, and I just calibrated my power meter to the Zwift one so the bike power meter to the Zwift power meter just to see how accurate they are surprisingly once they're calibrated properly they're pretty pretty close actually um, the 4i crank meter, I reckon, reads about five watts higher, but it's pretty close. Um, so I did that as sort of a test test yesterday, and um, and it's all ready to go. So that means that when I get home with the results, uh, when he sends them through, I can then apply that to my own training at home, rather than wishing I had a multi-thousand pound SRM uh, sat in my garage, which I do, obviously. Anyway, let's get in there and get set up. feels funny, I'm like the unfittest person here. And it's a building full of people that are future Olympians and there are, there are people that are gonna win gold medals and world championships in this building right now. And I'm me. Dr. Robinson. Hi. How are you? All right, thank you. Good to see you. Are we, are we shaking hands, yeah. is that allowed? Oh, oh sorry, let's hold hands. How are you? So Dr. Robinson sent me the protocol in advance so that I could program it into Zwift. That way I could use my phone to control the tax and we wouldn't have any connection issues in the lab. Essentially, it's a 25 watt increase every four minutes. And I started at 75 watts, which meant a very slow cadence to begin with, just to keep it in the right zone. As the wattages increased, I was able to ride at a slightly higher cadence. And Dr. Robinson took blood, lactate samples every three minutes into the test um, and at that point the reason why we use four minutes is to allow the heart rate to settle and he allowed me to go up until the point where my blood lactate reached four millimoles uh, and then he stopped me it's around about 250 watts on the graph and uh, the reason for stopping it around there was essentially the four millimole mark is uh, LT2 that's around about the the what you can hold for about an hour 45 minutes uh, but we didn't want those higher zones anyway what I'm after is at the much lower zone and I had a run test to do so that's why he stopped me around about that mark Bring something. Oh, oh there it is wow it's lower than yeah, it's Probably enough if we're going to do the running. Do you want me to stop there? Yeah, exactly. Okay. You don't need to get much further, but. Of course, we only want that bottom end. Any sense? I don't want to go too far so that you can't then. Um, so get the best out of the, the running. 
it's not about top end yet. We'll save that. <laughs> So as we hadn't gone too deep and too hard on the bike session, I was able to recover quite quickly. A quick change of clothes into probably one of my least flattering running t-shirts, and it was time to hop on the treadmill. The protocol for this was extremely similar to the bike, where we had four minute blocks, where the treadmill increased one uh, kilometer an hour per four minute blocks. The only difference really was that Dr. Robinson would get me to hop off the treadmill at the three minute mark of each four minute block to take blood. That took about 40 seconds, and then he'd have me back on, and then it would rise up about 20 seconds later to the next banding. One of the most interesting things for me during the test was I was able to understand a huge amount more about what was going on this time as opposed to 2016 when I was really only interested in what my VO2 max and what my FTP were. Um, I didn't really understand why I needed to those numbers, but I think a lot of us have these as kind of like benchmark figures we can compare to other people. Whereas actually all I was interested in on this occasion was the training side of things, the zones that I'm after in that bottom end. And I was really excited to understand a huge amount more about the gas exchange and the RER number and the millimoles and understanding more about lactate than I did back in 2016. And after I did the test, uh, Dr. Robinson was really kind and gave me a bit of an extended interview about a lot of questions that I had for him. Uh, I'm gonna use bits of the interview for other videos that I'm gonna do in the future, but uh, the first question I asked him really was about some of the information to do with the sub-maximal testing that we did. So you just put me through some not unpleasant tests. They were all right, you were very, uh, courteous and you, uh, you you stopped me before it got too agonizing and the, the tests I did back in 2016 was max maximal and, and these today was sub maximal can we just start off with just a little bit of an explanation by we see it kind of written down a lot what what you would kind of classify sub maximal and maximal efforts what what denotes that to you as a physiologist yeah so normally we do or traditionally you might do a VO2 max test mm -hmm. which is maximal oxygen consumption and by its kind of very nature obviously the word maximal suggests you're going as hard as you can so that kind of looks at the maximum amount of oxygen the body can take in and use when you're working as hard as you can and so that usually as a like a ramp test that'll just get harder up to the point where you can't do any more yeah and Normally with these sorts of tests, we take lactate as well from fingertip or rear lobe samples to look at lactate concentrations throughout the test as well. Um, and we did the same sort of test today, but because we were looking at slightly different things, we didn't need to go as far. Um, so with the max test, you go all the way through and you get a profile of what's going on in the body at different exercise intensities and mm -hmm. you can set training zones based on that. Whereas today, you're more interested in the lower, more aerobic bottom end of things. So we didn't really need to do the really hard, tough stuff because that's not what you're going to use when you're, you're training. Yeah. Um, so we looked at the lower end of what was going on there and then we could kind of curtail it. And you were stopping me through. just as my kind of blood lactate was getting to just over four point, well, four, four millimoles. Yeah, so millimoles. four millimoles. Yeah, so that's what you class as LT2, uh, is that correct? Pretty so, close to, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we, I mean, it can be four, it can be slightly more, slightly less, dependent okay. on the person, but up at that level is not going to be something that you'd be able to sustain for hours and hours. No. It's more like something you could probably sustain for 45 minutes. An okay. Hour. And once you go harder than that, obviously the duration at which you can sustain decreases and gets shorter. Okay, so to conclude, I am going to do a slightly longer video on the results that I got. I got a great big report from Dr. Robinson a couple of days ago with some incredible information. Got a few questions to ask him. When I've got all that back, I'm going to do a longer video talking about the results that we got from the testing. However, it would be a bit unfair to have made it all the way through this video and get no information about what we got back from the results. So I am going to give you a couple of things, mainly the heart rate predictions that I had compared to the results that we actually got. So in my predictions uh, for the bike heart rate for the Fax max point. Uh, I predicted just complete gut reaction at 133 BPM. The Garmin via 60% of our VO2 max measured by Garmin came at 126 BPM, and the test results actually came in at 121 BPM. So, um, lower than our predictions from both Garmin and from myself, but then ballpark figure. What was interesting though was the run RER results gave us as a fat max point. Um, 
in the test of 133, which is considerably lower than both A, my, my gut reaction prediction, which is 155, and also the Garmin 60% of VO2 max, which is at 140. As Dr. Robinson explained, if I am gonna go out and run and I run at 133 average, or I run at 133 for an hour and a half or something, I'm still gonna burn fat. It is a, a broad kind of range. It's not, uh, you know, if I don't run at this, I'm gonna be burning too many carbs, or if I, if I run below, I'm not burning any fat, whatever it is, it's gonna be a blend of these things, absolutely. One of the interesting things he pointed out, which is pretty obvious in my opinion, but it's worth noting, is that obviously the higher the intensity, the longer you'll be able to burn those calories for. So there is definitely this sweet spot. However, uh, those are my numbers then. So for the bike, uh, 121 BPM, and for the run, 133 BPM. It's extremely slow. I've already been out for a run and tried to run at 133 BPM, and it is a bit tricky uh, to run at that pace. So as he said to me, the bike is the place to kind of spend this time to get that fat off. So I would like to very quickly say, a massive thank you to Dr. Robinson and the team at Team Bath. They're always so incredibly accommodating and always so willing, particularly Dr. Robinson, to inform a very keen amateur that wishes they'd done a science degree. Um, but yeah, I will be back in April to, to see how those things have changed, but that's where we're at at the minute. There will be a longer form video in terms of coming to some more information that's come from the report as and when I learn about what those things mean. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Give me a thumbs up, leave a comment below, and I will see you on the next video.